Welcome to a new video. I thought I'd try something different this round, so it's more chill, just like the day I had exploring Tokyo on my own. On this day, I went around Yanasen, one of old Tokyo's neighborhoods made up of Yanaka, Nezu, and Tsundagi. My first stop was the Nezu Shrine, where I got an Omamori charm as usual, then walked to the Otome Inari Shrine next to it. Here you can find rows of Tori gates similar to Kyoto's Fushimi Inari Shrine, except it's much smaller. Nezu Shrine is also popular in summer when the azaleas are in full bloom. I went in spring, so it was just green. A lot of green. It was a weekday when I went and I realized a lot of the locals would sit there and have their lunch enjoying the calm scenery. As I was trying to find my way back to the shopping area for lunch, I saw this beautiful cherry blossom tree. And interestingly, it's actually marked on Google Maps as Cherry Tree at Nezu Shrine. So I guess it must be a landmark of some sort. Okay, so I finally stopped getting distracted and found my way back to the streets, saw this popular taiyaki shop, lots of people queued up for it, and I was looking for a place for lunch, it was pretty late by then, like 2pm, and I randomly found this unsuspecting shop, I wouldn't have thought that it was a ramen shop. Is it a ramen shop? No, it's an udon shop. It's, no, it's a soba shop. <laughs> okay, anyway, it was when they serve two types of soba noodles, one is thin and soft while the other is thick and chewy. You can offer a half and half to try both, and I ordered mine with a very flavorful duck dipping sauce, which had a few ways of eating. On its own, the sauce is a little salty, so just remember that this is a dipping sauce and not soup. So one of the ways to enjoy this soba is to add this salt into the sauce to make it just a little bit more fragrant. I ended up putting it quite a lot into it. <laughs> I only realized it was a restaurant because I was relying on Google Maps as I walked around to see if the building is a place to eat or someone's home. This place had a lot of great reviews which is why I thought I'll give it a try. And, okay, so this is another method of eating the soba which is when you're done with the noodles, you can scoop a few spoonsful of the sauce into this other cup and then add this hot soba water inside, mix it, and then you get your finishing soup. It's not bad. Honestly, it was such a lucky find because Hospitality was great, the staff was great, the hobachan was really friendly, I managed to make do with bare minimum English and Japanese. Okay, moving swiftly on, after lunch, I continued on foot and found this Kayaba coffee place which was recommended by my friend Snowy. It typically attracts a lot of people but because I was way past lunchtime at this point, so some of the hot foods were actually already sold out but I just needed coffee. It's a really cozy coffee shop and I was so tempting to just stay on longer than I did and just chill but I still had a lot of the neighborhood to explore. Okay so after a quick coffee break and a nice little sweet treat, I ended up walking into Yanaka Cemetery which turned out to be a popular cherry blossom viewing spot. And they do have some uh, historical figures buried there so it is also weirdly a place tourists visit. Then I made my way to the Yanaka shopping arcade area where it is popular for selling a lot of cat themed items. If you come to this area around sunset, it's also where the Yuyake Dandan is which is this set of staircase where you can view the gorgeous sunset against the backdrop of retro Tokyo in the background. I was too early, clearly. Yanaka Ginza Shopping Street is also popular for buying retro items, so you would spend a good amount of time here. There are also a lot of cute cafes, including this owl cafe, but I didn't have time because I needed to go back into the city to meet my friend for dinner. You can easily spend more than a day exploring the Yanasan area because I didn't even make it to Sendagi. Heading back to meet my friend Snowy near her office, she took me to eat this what she proclaims to be the best tantan men she has ever tasted. And I would have to agree, it was it was spicy, but it was really good. So that concludes day one of me exploring Tokyo on my own. Let me know if these voiceovers are better or I should just stick to putting captions. But yeah, till the next video, thank you for watching and please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Bye!